Richard Krauss. Now, the good part of When in Rome, the new Kristen Bell film, is that it doesn't follow the usual unlikely boy meets unlikely girl romantic comedy setup. The bad part is that just because it doesn't follow the usual rom-com rules doesn't mean it isn't predictable. Uh, Bell is Beth, a work-obsessed curator at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. After her last boyfriend, quote, ripped her heart out and fed it to the pigeons in Central Park, she lost faith in romance. But when her sister impulsively decides to get married in Italy, Beth reluctantly takes a couple of days off where she ends up drunk in the fountain of love, plucking coins from the water. Little does she realize that an old legend declares that when you take coins from the fountain, you take the heart of the person who tossed the coin in the fountain in the first place. Soon, she is being willingly courted by an ex-football star, Nick, played by Josh Duhamel, uh, and unwillingly courted by four men, an artist, a street magician, a sausage salesman, and a model. Now, the question, though, is, is the love for real, or is it just a magic spell? When in Rome is as frothy as it gets. It's a romantic fantasy with no foot whatsoever in reality. In fact, the only fantasy here is that anybody thought that this was a strong enough idea to carry an entire movie. There were a few laughs sprinkled throughout, and the audience I saw this with laughed intermittently, but the jokes, like an Italian priest mispronouncing lawfully wedded wife as awfully wedded wife, not once but twice, are more, I guess, amusing than actually funny. The movie does earn some legit laughs. A tiny European car gag is silly fun from the more comic savvy members of the cast like Will Arnett, Danny DeVito, and Dax Shepard. John Napoleon Dynamite Heater, though, continues his string of more annoying than funny performances here. But when uh, the attention shifts away from them to the leads, when in Rome, flatlines. Bell's idea of physical comedy is to smile with spinach in her teeth, and while she's an agreeable presence on screen, she isn't really suited for this kind of comedy. Ditto Don Johnson, who plays her father. The years have been kind to Johnson, but he doesn't have a natural gift for comedy, and as for Angelica Houston, as Beth's testy Guggenheim head curator, let's just say I choose to remember her glory days in films like The Grifters and Pritzi's Honor. Josh Duhamel fares slightly better. He's charming, but slightly goofy. He's a single guy with a perfect bachelor pad, complete with a barber's chair, a pinball machine, and the prerequisite neon cocktail sign, who can, you know, deliver a joke well enough, but appears to me to be a modern-day tab hunter. He's more male model than interesting actor. When in Rome is further proof that romantic comedy needs a shot in the arm. A few weeks ago, on the release of Leap Year, I suggested that someone like Quentin Tarantino should come in and completely reboot the genre. Seeing When in Rome didn't change my mind. Richard Krauss.